Hello all, welcome to our channel. So in this video, we will talk about uh, the IT, I2C communication between two devices and especially we are going to talk about that timeout condition. So before going into the details of uh, the timeout condition, uh, basically the communication between master and a slave in I2C happens depending on when the start condition is initiated and when the stop condition is initiated. Like example, uh, every time master has control of the bus in I2C. That means if you want to initiate a communication um, in a I2C setup, master only can do so master only can uh, initiate a clock and uh, send some data and then expect some data from uh, a slave so that's how uh, the communication is set up so what a master does is when it wants to start uh, a communication shown here um, indicated by blue it sends a start condition that means the first hda goes high and then uh, the scl goes high and then there will be address sent and then read or write command and then you will receive an act based on that the next communication um, uh, proceeds in the i2c okay so once this communication uh, is to be stopped um, the master initiates a stop condition so this is what is indicated in red where um, the sda and scl lines shall be pulled high so now in a scenario where let us assume master has initiated start condition and then there is some data and due to some reason in between uh, the SDA and SCL lines remained high for a longer time which is basically not a, uh, a stop condition because stop condition should follow the sequence as shown here uh, first uh, CL should be pulled high and then SDA should be pulled high you can see so the sequence is not followed and uh, somehow in a different sequence if both SDA and SCL lines are pulled high the other devices feel that the bus is still under communication like example take a um, multi master uh, scenario where there are more than one master uh, um, so or <coughs> the slaves they keep on um waiting for that information without uh, understanding that sta and scl lines have gone high and remained idle in that condition for a long time that means there is no communication on the bus but because there is no stop condition that is seen by the devices it seems uh, the other um, <coughs> I2C uh, devices feel that uh, the bus is under the control of the first master. In that case, what happens is the channel remains indefinite and none of the other masters try to communicate over the bus. So to eliminate this scenario, some of the master devices have something called timeout. So what timeout condition is that um, for a specific number of clock uh, uh, signals uh, example uh, <coughs> it can be configured in the system uh, based on what timeout we need uh, so based on that um, the timeout can be configured so that if the i2c bus goes into an indefinite idle state um, then it can come out and uh, uh, retry the uh, communication so <coughs> This is one of the important feature uh, in I2C communication and we can say this is an error recovery uh, mechanism in I2C uh, to bring uh, the I2C out of its uh, idle state and is very very important uh, <coughs> thing. So uh, while arbitration is one thing where a particular master holds the bus uh, uh, as per its requirement, um, the 
<coughs> indefinite idle state is something where none of the guys are in control, none of the masters are in control and uh, everyone are under the assumption that there is uh, uh, some uh, control by one of the master but uh, where that is not the scenario. So this uh, is a very very important feature in I2C communication and uh, <coughs> If uh, you have uh, tried out, uh, uh, just post your comments, let us know um, the scenarios you have faced while working on timeout and how much timeout is kept. Uh, so please uh, uh, post your comments. Thank you. Uh, please subscribe our channel and like our video if you like the content. Thank you.